Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are really honoured to have with us Professor Chua Beng Huat, who is Head of Sociology at the National University of Singapore. Professor Chua, thank you for coming on the show. So, what do you think of the election so far? Uh, I think that it's a lot more energy than it used to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I also think that effectively it's been focused on only several occasions or several people actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what is what actually surprised me a lot is the emergence of Chi Sun Chuan. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, he has showed his charisma a lot in this time in in the way he presented himself, mm. uh, the way he had been able to recruit some people in spite of. The continuous playing up of his past, yes. uh, which is, you know, I mean, really problematic. Yeah. But I think uh, he's gaining a lot of respect, even from people, friends that I don't generally think that I would be liberal enough to see it. Yes. So that's that's interesting, and I think that's probably uh, a good development. I mm. think. I think. Uh, have you uh, been to any of his rallies and speeches? No, but I've been to. I've, I've been only watching yeah. on streaming because he can be at several places, right? So yes, yes. I mean, so actually, the streaming, the nightly streaming, actually is quite useful yeah. to sample the different. Actually, going to one of his rallies, though, I tried going, mm. and it was uh, when he came out. It was like a rock star. People yeah, yeah. leaped to their feet and screamed and cheered. And, you can uh, see that yesterday, uh, even at yes. the downtown. Yes. Which yes. is quite surprising, I mean, for him to yes. have a reception if our, in that yeah. location. <laughs> yes, precisely, right? Yeah. Our corporate yeah. conservative financial elite are also greeting him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's quite, a, yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is a, that is a surprise. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a, a Do you surprise. think this is any sort of reflection of changing attitudes among Singaporeans to how we conduct our politics? As a sociologist, I think that I think that by now is most most of the time when people talk about politics, unfortunately they keep focusing on the unchanging dominance of the PAP in Parliament. Okay, and one of the very in- important neglected consideration is the changes in the society. Because 50 years of continuous economic changes, development, right? And 50 years of continuous investment in education mm-hmm. must have radically changed the people. Yeah. Okay? I mean, uh, so I think that the that that particular social change in the in in the people themselves uh, inevitably will begin to uh, demand different ways of being governed. I think the kind of heavy-handed governance of Lee Kuan Yew days was over a long time ago. Seriously, it was over probably by about by the time he retired. From prime ministership, yes. I think he would have, you know, retired. I think that kind of, you know, uh, hard authoritarianism was over. I mean, it's quite interesting because as soon as Go Chok Tong took over the prime ministership, the re- the rhetoric of government changed fairly radically. Yes. I mean, even though people don't always talk about, it. I mean, he actually shifted from governing to talking about how the government to be elected is to be entrusted by the people to govern. Yeah. So he actually shifted the idea of governance to trusteeship. Right. Okay. Now that's a fairly interesting shift because uh, it, it, it allows a lot more room to talk about cooperation between people and government. Right. 
And then recently, again, I mean, you know, the, the image right, of government has shifted again to the inclusive society. Mm. I think some of these changes uh, are actually not voluntaristic in the sense that the PAP itself came up with it, but really is a response to the changes in the society, to the need to accommodate more and more difference. At the same time though, uh, in the snap election of 91, Ko Chok Tong, the KP lost four seats and mm. Go blamed some of his more open consultative style for leading to that loss, leading to a you know, more yeah. tightening up. Yeah. So it shows that on the one hand there is this, they recognize the rhetoric, but at the same time, they don't seem to be willing to actually commit to that change, right? Actually, I'm not. I'm not convinced of that. I think. I think he was shocked by the outcome, and partly because I think uh, of misplaced expectation, because they've been always gaining all the seats. So every time there's a loss, like the first loss in Ensign was a shock. Mm. And then losing four years was a shock. And then, you know, 2011 is another shock. Yeah. So every time they lose some ground, right, they will be... I remember that ev that very clearly, that very mm. evening he says, wow, well, yeah. I have to go, you know, I may have to rethink my uh, yeah, consultative exactly. yeah. uh, policies and go back to the old ways. And I, I remember because I wrote a letter to the Straits Times saying that, had he not changed his position, had he not become more conservative, had he stuck to the Lee Kuan Yew uh, postures, he would probably have lost a lot more. Mm. And I never got any, you know, rebuttal back. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and then, but then also you see, you see the subsequent behavior is actually towards more, more and more consultation. Rather. So in spite of that outburst, mm. he never went back to becoming this Harvard person. So, so I think that the that the current election generates a lot more excitement uh, is to be expected, really. And the demand for or the expressed desire for the presence of an opposition in parliament is by now practically a non-issue. I mean, no one in Singapore would yeah, say think, we should go yes. back yeah, we to a situation that there's no opposition. Yes. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Uh, now there's an interesting problem. I mean, I think it's a genuine problem. Yeah. In fact, I was just asked this problem by one of the office uh, managers today, uh, whether, you know, what if many of the opposition party members get elected into parliament, what would happen? I mean, it's like still trying to, a lot of people still trying to imagine yeah. what it would look like. I mean, with it's kind of, it's conceptually easy, even in the last four years, right? Because you only have workers' party and then the uh, PAP on the other side, right? But what if you actually do end up with the multi-party politics? All right, if she should try and get in. Yes. So now you have three parties in parliament. Yes. Right? Uh, so I think Singaporeans are still starting to imagine or starting to think about the consequence mm -hmm. of this. And still very uncertain yeah. as to how to vote. But it seems to me that this is still we still will have a PAP majority mm. because, I mean, quite frankly, a lot of the opposition candidates aren't going to win. It's basically the Workers' Party and STP, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. And even if they win all their seats, yeah. they will still have just around one-third, you know, they will be able to maybe block constitutional changes. But in a Westminster-style system, you only need a majority plus, I mean, 50% plus one vote yeah, yeah, yeah. to just have complete control. Right, right, right. So really nothing that drastic will change. You know, I yeah. think uh, we're still quite a long way off from imagining a multi-party system. Exactly, exactly. No, I think, yeah. I think this election, right, is not going to threaten the PAP. I mean, it's like, no. 
you know, the this Kobun one's line that there's no guarantee is really not real. Yeah. <laughs> there is there is no question that comes up today we will have a PAP government. Yes. Uh, how I mean so but you can see that, you know, I mean there is a sense of responsibility. I mean I think I think that's something about the Singapore electorate that is worth sort of commanding for is that that you know, even though it's pretty well assured that there will be a majority PAP government that they still sort of weigh up, you know, uh, the votes seriously, uh, and, and understanding that them that there must be an opposition in parliament, right? mm -hmm. and whether they then how do they cast their vote? Well, I mean, historically, but I think the burden is clearly on some place yeah. and others. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. The bur the burden yeah. is clearly on some constituency rather than other constituency. Yes. yes. Right. So, for example, I mean, it's practically impossible to imagine that our unit would change. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the single seats, Pongol, and something you might not be so sure, but yeah, the Aljunied GRC, we're pretty sure, will not change. Um, in spite of all the who has about. Town council management. Now, uh, the question is, which other, you know, constituency is going to take this up yes. as the national interest, yes. not the local interest? Because yes. in fact, very, I mean, if the past record is to go by, right, voting the for opposition party, and if the opposition party win. If you're in the housing estate, it's self-punishment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Quite deliberately, right? That's <laughs> yeah. why town councils were created. That's to punish people who think of. And not only that, you are, you know, in the back of the queue for yes. upgrading, you know, and yes. you always the MPs have to work through PA to get, yes. you know, upgrade, you know, different yeah. upgrading programs approved and all kinds of stuff, right? So I mean, you were doing it. With you know, with the knowledge, with yeah. the knowledge that there is yeah. some cost to your material life. Yeah. All right. So you have. So I think when. So I think we should seriously appreciate those constituency who actually kept the national interest in democracy alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. At at their own expense. Right. I mean, yes. for a long time, Ho Kang and Patong Pasir residents mm. have been carrying the weight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, uh, now Aljunied, Hokan, they're still doing that, right? Yeah, of yeah. course. You work closely with Daniel Go. Yes. I, would you be willing to endorse him for, uh, <laughs> for Parliament? Uh, you don't have to ask. No, 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 no. I think, I think, I think Daniel, uh, Daniel will be very level-headed if he gets elected. Yeah. yeah, I think he has always been. I have had the privilege to be his teacher mm. and then to have worked with him. Uh, no, I think he will, you know, if he liked it, he wouldn't be crazy. He would be very level-headed and measured in his presence. Fantastic. Yeah. That's good to hear. Okay. Okay, so we're uh, out of time. So is it okay if uh, we uh, cut away now and uh, you stick around, we'll keep talking, we'll put the rest of this up on the sure. web? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Bing Huat. And uh, we've been talking to Professor Chua Bing Huat of the National University of Singapore. So stick around. We'll be right back.